What if I told you that you can actually convert your existing bicycle into a practical functional e-bike for half the price compared to buying it brand new right off the shelf with actually the same specifications as well, sometimes even better. Here in this video, we're going to be having a look at a e-bike conversion kit from Yo's Power. Now I've had this specific e-bike conversion kit just coming up to about a year now. I've done 1000 miles with this specific e-bike kit and I have actually transferred this specific kit onto three different bicycles. We're going to be doing a full review on this e-bike kit. I'm gonna be talking about some of the practical benefits of owning an e-bike. Why would you want to convert your existing bicycle or a regular bicycle into an e-bike? What are the cost savings? Like I'm actually going to show you exactly how much money you can save or expect to save. We're gonna be answering questions like, can you ride these e-bikes in the rain? Understanding about the voltage on these batteries. Why personally I recommend carrying an extra battery when you're riding one of these e-bikes. What do I need to know about the speed regulations? What's the real battery capacity? I also took the time to actually do a full battery range test. So I went out and I rode the battery out as far as I thought it could go. Actually, it went even further than I was expecting, which was really interesting. So definitely stick around to the end of the video to find out all that you need to know before you go into trying to convert your bike. If you need any assistance with the installation, I've already done a video about how to install one of these. And I'll just do my best to explain what I've learned so far after owning one of these e-bike conversion kits since a year. Now, the first time that I was ever introduced into e-bikes was actually way back when I was over in Australia and I worked in an electric bike store. And it was actually the first time I ever installed a e-bike conversion kit onto a regular bike. That really opened up my eyes as to what you can actually do once you've converted one of these regular bikes into an e-bike, they honestly become a different mode of transport and you can't really put them in the same exact category as a regular bicycle personally. Now, just to be clear so that people understand, I still ride my regular bike all the time. And in fact, I did have my road bike converted for a while with this e-bike conversion kit, which was fantastic. It worked really well. However, over time, I noticed that I definitely missed having a regular analog bicycle. In my mind, logically, I thought the best way forward was to have both. So I decided that I would go out and I would try and find a secondhand mountain bike because it I'm telling you from my experience, mountain bikes are a lot more easier to convert than road bikes. As for now, that could change in the future. So I chose to go with the Rock Rider ST520. It's a model of bicycle from Decathlon, which you can get on a really good price secondhand. I basically transferred the e-bike e conversion kit from my road bike onto this mountain bike, this, this Rock Rider ST520. I actually also previously installed this kit onto my father's mountain bike, which also happens to be a Rock Rider SD520. So for me, it was really easy to install. I highly recommend selecting the Rock Rider for the conversion. It has disc brakes, which is definitely a plus side. You can use traditional V brakes or rim brakes, but I would say try and stick with disc brakes if you can. One of the main things that I like to do, I like to run my errands using the e-bike. If I'm going out to meet someone, if it's going out to go and pick up food from the grocery store, if it's for work, what I like about the e-bike is it allows you to save your energy for whatever else you're doing in the day. If I would use my regular bike, I know I'm going to arrive somewhere feeling a little bit more fatigued than I would just riding an e-bike. And on the e-bike, you can still choose the levels. So you can choose if you wanna have an easy ride or you can also put the difficulty a little bit harder. Honestly, everybody's gonna be a little bit different on that. So I'm not here to judge at all. And hopefully this explains a bit more clearly as to what I like to use my e-bike for. The cherry on top of the cake for me is when you're able to charge your e-bike and your battery via solar. So I do have some videos explaining that in case anybody's interested in that. When I go out for my errands, like I was just mentioning, can you ride this specific e-bike conversion kit in the rain? I can confirm, yes, you can, but I would recommend getting a special water cover for your battery. That's something I would recommend in case you're in a really heavy amount of rain, but just be mindful about how long your rides are and how long you'll be riding in the rain for. This is just me personally, just make sure you dry off the bike well afterwards, keep it in a undercover 
overnight to let it dry out. For example, if I'm going to plan out a route to go shopping for the day, I would like to still see if there's going to be rain throughout the day. If it's going to be light showers for an hour, that's not going to bother me. If it's raining the entire time there and back, it personally, it's something I would rather avoid. You're still riding a bicycle. So the same thing applies whether you're riding a regular bike or an e-bike. Do you want to ride in the rain or not? I know that riding a bicycle in the rain usually will degrade the parts faster and you have to be more mindful about keeping a decent amount of grease on the axles, making sure that your chain is well lubricated. You can even get some anti-rust for certain components, which would be worth doing. Now, one of the things that I like to do, if I know I'm going for a ride that's over 30 kilometers away, I just have more peace of mind if I can have that extra battery with me. It kind of depends on so many different factors, so I won't go into too many details of that. But long story short, I can now see that there's a huge benefit to having two batteries for your e-bike. The way I think of it is a bit like when you're using an electric drill. It's super handy when you've got two batteries. So you swap to that other battery, you let the other one charge, and you can kind of repeat that process as many times as you like. This is the same mentality or the same mindset when it comes to the e-bike. So in my mind, it's an absolute no-brainer that it's so beneficial to have two batteries. You can also double your range. You can carry more weight on the bike and run the bike on a faster speed. I think it's now important to start talking about speed regulations and what I've learned so far about them. Keep in mind, I'm talking about the European Union regulations, which is very closely related to the UK one. I believe the UK is a little bit more strict. While I was testing the range of the, well, the, one of the larger batteries that I got recently, following the standard speed limit where the bike is limited at 25 kilometers an hour. And as I was doing the test, I had several moments where road cyclists were easily overtaking me, like riding maybe 35 kilometers an hour. For me, there is something so illogical about that. It just doesn't make sense, personally, does it? Anybody, literally anybody of any age, of any physical ability, if you're going downhill, this is also a gray area because many people can get way above 30 kilometers an hour. You can get into the 40, 45 kilometers an hour when you're going downhill. So personally, I find the speed regulations are it's a little bit too strict. I believe that if we're riding around in the countryside, I think it should be bumped up to around 30 kilometers an hour. That's just me personally. Maybe in the cities, I can kind of see the sense of having a restriction of around 25 kilometers an hour. That being said, there is a lot of grayness to this regulation. One thing that I would like to point out is that whenever someone is riding off-road, it suddenly starts to become quite a bit of a gray area. I do find that the motor restrictions and the wattage, I also find that to be a little bit too strict as well, and it's quite illogical. One thing that they're not considering is the weight of the bike, how much weight you're carrying on the bike, the weight of the rider, whether you're riding uphill on a very steep track, for example, or whether you're riding off-road. All of these factors will require that you need a more powerful motor. Even to sustain that 25 kilometers an hour, the terrain that you're riding on and whatever bike you're riding with will sometimes require you to use a more powerful motor. If you do live in a hilly environment and you're sometimes going to be going off-road, I can definitely vouch for that you will need to get the higher performance kit. However, if you live in a very flat area, you can definitely save a little bit of money by going with the standard motor. Now let's move on to what I discovered when I was testing out the range of the larger 18 amp hour battery from Yo's Power. So in terms of the route, I tried to pick, as you can see, the flattest route that I could find in the region that I'm located. I decided to just go towards the mountains, but I stuck to the valley and I followed a river known as the Ariège, which is what the département is named after here in the Pyrenees. Very, very nice town located on the Ariège River, Tarascon sur Ariège. Started at around 350 meters, climbing up to 550 meters. Actually quite impressive that I still managed to climb a little bit in elevation even had a slight headwind on the way there and a bit of a tailwind on the way back so everything kind of averaged out by the end of the day and i was able to do 88 kilometers consistently holding around 25 kilometers an hour my average speed i think was around 22 because sometimes you would go 
up and over a hill and that would reduce the speed a little bit. I would say I averaged around 25 kilometers an hour with quite a lot of assistance coming from the motor. I pedaled very lightly. The, the whole point of the test was to really allow the battery to do as much of the work as possible. And I was really quite impressed with the range of the 18 amp hour battery. I still think the 13 amp hour is still pretty impressive considering its size and weight. I think this is a good point to actually mention about the voltage and understanding how these e-bike batteries work. I can't speak for the 48 volt batteries because I personally don't own one. I have a friend who does have one. When we're talking just purely about the 36 volt e-bike batteries, when these batteries are fully charged, you'll notice that you'll read 42 volts on the e-bike display. What you'll see later on in my battery capacity test is that you can drain these batteries all the way down to around 30 volts. I would try to avoid going below 30 volts because that isn't really very healthy for the battery. And what you'll notice is that the lowest voltage that I was able to get on full range pack capacity test on this 18 amp hour battery, I think we finished off on the day at just under 32 volts. Now that definitely is a sign that you really need to go and put your battery on charge if you arrive anywhere near 33 to 32 volts. The battery is almost at zero basically you'll be able to turn on the display but it won't give you any power to the motor it should try to limit any power going to the motor so hopefully that explains roughly how to gauge the percentage of your battery because the, the screen is usually kind of a little bit strange it, the bars will always kind of hop around quite a bit so personally i just look at the voltage once you get to around the 36 volts and 34 volts you're going to notice that the power that the bike can give will not be the same when the bike is fully charged at 42 volts the assist level needs to go slightly higher to maintain that level of assist generally the speedometer is definitely more responsive than using a gps i did notice there was a small discrepancy on the numbers between using my e-bike display and the gps i won't get into the details as to why that is it'd be best to try and play around with the wheel size and try and find what fits best for you what you feel is the most accurate speed now let's discuss about cost savings and i think this is where things start to get really interesting so for the sake of simplicity i wanted to base all of my numbers in pounds so in sterling or quid i thought we would take the standard rock rider the 27 and a half inch hardtail electric mountain bike so it's the est 100 there were a couple of things that i noticed about it first off that price tag these bikes from Decathlon start at around a thousand pounds. In terms of specification, from what I can see, these are almost on par, if not even slightly less than what Yo's Power are offering on their e-bike conversion kits. In terms of numbers, Decathlon seem to claim that their battery, for example, on this specific mountain bike, I'm being quite generous on the number, but I think it's around three to 400 watt hours is what they claim. And I can tell you, I can vouch for you in my testing, I was getting way more than that on the Yo's Power 13 amp hour battery. Definitely watch through to the end where I start to look at the battery capacity test. So in terms of the brand new e-bike from Decathlon, the Rock Rider starts at £1,000. You can get this same bike used from Decathlon for £800, which is not too bad. And that would be a £200 saving. You can get the e-bike conversion kit for £330. I'm just kind of averaging that because they do offer different configurations for what you'll need. Some individuals might already have a bike that is compatible to do the conversion. For example, if you've got a hybrid bike or a mountain bike, these bikes are highly compatible with the Yo's Power e-bike conversion kits. So as you can see, we're already going to get a 670 pound savings just by going with the e-bike conversion kit, brand new with a warranty and just using your original existing mountain bike or hybrid bike. And then you could have three e-bikes almost for the same price of one. Now, moving on from that, some people might not have a mountain bike or hybrid bike that is compatible. So another option, what you could do, you could go to the secondhand market, like on Gumtree, Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, Le Bon Coin. There's lots of different options. I went to the secondhand marketplace online. Personally, as I've already explained, I bought my mountain bike secondhand. You can find a rock rider for 140 pounds. Try to go for disc brakes if you can. So as you can see, that would be a 530 
30 pounds saving. Another option that you could consider is that you could go for a brand new mountain bike with a warranty from Decathlon. You can buy them for around 300 to 350 pounds, depending on which mountain bike or hybrid bike that you go for. As you can see, that would be a 320 pound savings compared to buying the brand new e-bike from Decathlon, the Rock Rider EST100. Keep in mind, all these numbers will be very similar if you look at the European market, and I'm sure in the United States it would be a very similar situation as well. And on the off chance that you might get really lucky, you might be able to get a used e-bike conversion kit. This is kind of going to be a bit of a gray area for some people, but if you do have a mountain bike that is compatible with the Yoast Power e-bike conversion kits, and you manage to find a used e-bike conversion kit, you'd have a savings of £725 compared to buying it brand new. I don't know about you, but that's definitely worth considering. And last but not least, let's discuss about the battery capacity test for those enthusiasts who are interested in what the true capacity is of these Yo's Power e-bike batteries. So when I tested out the 13 amp power, I left it on a nine and a half hour test. I just basically let my battery capacity tester just run the battery down to zero. Just keep in mind that it can only draw something like 50 watts continuously. My battery capacity tester is not able to draw the higher amounts that might happen on a ride. So consider this kind of like a lab condition, but at least it allows us to figure out what the actual watt hours is of these e-bike batteries. As you can see on the 13 amp hour, I was get able to get 13.5 amp hours actually out of this battery. So it was giving me a whopping 500 watt hours, which is even higher than what the official rating is on Yoast Power's website. Now, in terms of the 18 amp power, I was able to get the 18 amp hours out of that battery, but please note what the voltage was, as you can see on screen, that is the voltage that I had to drain it down to, to get 18 amp hours out of the battery. It looks like the difference between the 13 amp power and the 18 amp power is about 115 watt hour. You're basically getting an extra 100 watt hours out of the 18 amp hour battery compared to using the 13 amp hour battery, which is rated around 500 watt hours. Again, if you were draining a higher amount of power, it might be more like 450 watt hours, but still it's about a 100 watt hour difference between both of these batteries. As you can probably guess by this video, I highly recommend these Yo's Power e-bike conversion kits. I think they are excellent value for money. Hopefully with the price graph, you can see that you're getting a really big savings if you convert your existing bicycle into an electric bike compared to just buying a brand new e-bike from, say, Decathlon. For my next video, you might be interested in my other reviews where I talk about off-grid living and solar panels and stuff like that and batteries. And then for those who are interested, I do have a video talking about how to add a solar panel to your e-bike when you're out and about. That's it for this video. Like and subscribe and I hope to see you in a future video.